Welcome everyone to Antelope Island. I am here with the 2005 Lotus Elise. Just a little backstory here. My actual kind of lineage with the Lotus Elise goes back to 2014 when I actually denied the opportunity to drive one due to my own incompetence of driving a manual gearbox. Fast forward now to 2018 and here we are, 2005 Lotus Elise here on Antelope Island on a Wednesday morning. And frankly, I can't really think of a better way to really introduce myself to the car than on an empty, twisty, fun, and beautiful road. So uh, let's go for a drive and see what it's all about. All right, so welcome to inside the 2005 Lotus Elise. And we are driving around here on Antelope Island, having a great time. And what a way to really kick off my involvement in driving this car on a near empty road in the middle of the week. It has 190 horsepower from a 1.8 liter motor that comes out of the Toyota Celica from the same vintage around 2004. It weighs nothing. And it's you can really tell the difference between when a car weighs a lot and has a lot of power and the same power to weight ratio, but a car that weighs much less. You can really feel it, especially in the corners. And that's really what this car is really meant for, is cornering ability and carrying speed. And part of the weight savings that brings the car down to that low number is the fact that it doesn't have power steering. And that's totally fine because it doesn't weigh anything. You work your arms a little bit more than you normally would, but I've definitely felt much worse. Car driver cites this car as a zero to 60 time of 4.9 seconds. And if you can get a good launch at sea level, I can definitely see that being a distinct possibility. And you definitely get more of a shove from that second cam profile that comes on at 6,500 RPM. The gearbox is a six speed. The weight of the shifter knob itself actually really helps guide you into each slot. The linkage on this car in particular, because it is a high miles car, is a bit loose. The car has 65,000 miles on it, which for an Elise, that's known as a bit high miles. There's a couple things that are a little loose and a little kind of some uh, things to nitpick about. It's the shifter linkage and the brake pedal feel itself. The brake pedal feel itself is not as tight as I would like. Yeah, the steering feel on this car is, is on point. It, this is the gold standard for which all other cars should be measured in uh, steering feel. You know exactly where the tires are pointed. You know exactly what's going on with the imperfections that are going on in the road. While there is a bit of give in the brake pedal from the get-go, you actually have a lot of brakes in this car, partially because it doesn't weigh anything. But these are brakes that you can keep pounding on and pounding on and pounding on, and can feel completely inspired to just keep on hauling ass through corners and braking hard before them. And enjoying yourself. Another note about the engine is that is how rev happy it is. This is a motor that just loves to rev. Heel towing is great. It loves to rev match and it'll, it'll carry all the way to 8600 rpm. And then the second cam comes on at 6500 rpm. It's funny when I actually got in this car for the very first time and I hit that second cam it almost felt or it almost sounded like it was a Honda motor and I questioned if there was actually a K-swap in here or not. They sound very, very similar, but they're, you know, Japanese four cylinders made in the early 2000s that are around two meters. So it makes total sense. Space in here is, well, it's cramped if I'm being honest. I'm 5'10 and with the seat in its current position and the roof on, it is a struggle trying to get out of the car. I have to put the seat back and I have to really lean on the steering wheel to get out of the car. Makes it kind of rough. And I don't even really consider myself like a very big guy, like at all. Which is hilarious because my friend Todd Deacon, the everyday driver, is 6'5 and dailies this in the summertime to and from Park City every day. It feels so good driving this car after the three and a half year wait and kicking myself for that amount of time since I was offered to drive one on Everyday Drivers Minute to Mountains. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm almost kind of glad that I waited because if I drove this car then, I don't think I would appreciate it for what it truly is. Oh yeah, so another thing to discuss about this car that's uh, not so pleasant. I would uh, describe this air conditioning system as 
just absolutely awful. Uh, we've been sitting in this car with, you know, AC cranked and doors open and doors closed. And our, we're, I'm kind of, in the small space that we were in, you still find it almost a challenge to really keep cool, whether it be on your B road or on the freeway, it's less than ideal. And that really speaks to kind of the fact of you have to really want this car and this experience of being raw and bare bones and visceral and almost uh, exposed to the elements. You have to want that experience. But if that's the case, and if you want this, nothing else will do. Porsches can't do this. Even the Alpha was a little bit nicer than this. This is the closest thing I've ever actually experienced to driving a go-kart on the road. And even, you know, driving it by semis on the freeway or in stop-and-go traffic, you really do feel like you're in a go-kart, possibly because, you know, everyone's looking at you. final words on the 2005 Lotus Elise. I'm going to start off with the fact that I am 5 foot 10 and I still have a hard time getting out of this car. You have to really want the visceral and raw experience that comes with a car that doesn't have power steering. The AC feels like it's being blown by, frankly, an asthmatic snowman. And uh, the fact that you can barely see out the back at all. With all that said, the car is amazing to drive, the steering feel is on point, the power is actually really fairly usable, even though it's under 200 horsepower, but it also weighs under 2,000 pounds. Take that as you will. For $30,000, these cars are really starting to bottom out, and they've been holding for quite a while, and I can only see this as an, as an investment. I personally really, really want one now, and I, uh, I can't believe that it's really taken me this long for me to drive one. Uh, with all that said, thank you very much to Grant for letting me take your car, and... Uh, Tune in next time, where we drive other cool shit and stuff. <laughs>